tips of today. We're launching the um, version two of the Sharia today. Uh, the um, the main uh, author of this uh, is Patrick Flamerion, and he is um, he is about to talk to us about it now. I just one or two small things uh, before Patrick's presentation. There is, of course, a poster session, which is um, which is the researchers from the pilot call and uh, and and some other framework program researchers, and their posters are very very interesting, and they are in in the room midway between the two coffee rooms. So there's a poster session, uh, an opportunity to see them at lunchtime, of course, and also later on in the afternoon, where there's dedicated time for for looking at them. I would ask you. Uh, please to talk to the uh, to the people at the posters because they have put a lot of effort into it and uh, and and ask them to explain their work and what they what they have done what they have achieved and what they're hoping to do uh, so th that's important um, after Patrick's uh, presentation I'm going to hand the chair over to Miguel on my left who is going to uh, moderate the first round table discussion and the people who are in the first round table will then join uh, Miguel at this at this desk here uh, and they will give presentations from their seats rather than taking the podium just to save a couple of minutes here and there. Uh, short presentations just on their thoughts, no overheads, no, no need for overheads. But the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, this is version two. Patrick has been uh, living and, and um, eating and sleeping with this for uh, quite a while. And I think, Patrick, today you can, uh, you can, you can a bit like Enrique, you can say, been there, done that, have the t-shirt. So over to you, Patrick. Thank you very much, Patrick. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, yes, I'm very glad to be here today to introduce you to the second version of the SRIA of the Water GPI. I'm director of the Water Scientific Department of IRSTEA, a research institute in France, member of the French research alliance Alain V. And I'm addressing you today more specifically uh, as the work package three leader of the water project, for which the main objective was the development of a sharply focused and a realistic strategic research agenda, based on the mapping and analysis of the state of the art and based on internal and ex external consultations. And these three years, more than three year task has proved to be very challenging time demanding to due to the subject, and we are pleased to be able to present it today. I've not been alone. We have been 13 partners in the Water uh, WP3 uh, work package, and almost 20 uh, people directly involved, and hundreds of people during the uh, work workshops as well as the advisory board. So many, many people have been involved in the 3A 2.0. It has been a very collective process. The 3A is a strategic document that lays out research and innovation needs in the field of water in order to guide research and innovation in Europe because it will be used to framework Europe work programs in the field of water and because it is a crucial element of the objective of alignment of national and European programs, strategies, and the 3 is therefore the backbone of the water GPI. The reduction of the 3 has followed an iterative process. This approach has served the purpose of building a document in accordance with emerging needs in the water domain and also to take into consideration views of a very broad base of water GPI partners and stakeholders. The publication of the water GPI vision document in 2011 was triggered a long process of collection of information, analysis, redaction, that led to the release of the 3R 0.5 in May 2013 and to the 3R 1.0 in June 2014. And now 3R 2.0 was as just been finalized at the beginning of the year and was approved by the governing board in April 2016. So 
As you can see also, both RUIA 1.0 and RUIA 2.0 are followed by implementation plans. These plans develop activities based on the priorities identified in RUIA and will in time be realized through the Water GPI and through also various EU and national funding mechanisms. But the RUIA is not only based on the principle of iteration. In order to guarantee an integrated vision for water research, it requires a multidisciplinary approach as economic, ecological, societal challenges are to be addressed. It is also resulted from a comprehensive and consultative process that didn't leave stakeholders by the wayside. In order to fulfill the objective of the 3i, it was important to conduct a large review of information sources. This process of collection and analysis of information was necessary to improve the understanding of the water landscape by looking at water policy, RDI programs, existing societal, scientific, and technological challenges. We have devoted a considerable amount of time for the selection, review, of the relevant documents. And this process was used as a way to identify current and emerging RDN needs and objectives in a very comprehensive manner. You have strategic agendas, uh, European programs, three years from other GPIs, national agendas, um, strategic agendas from WSSTP, EIP, and so on, and also up to uh, 48 foresight studies that helped us to, to see in the long term the emerging needs in, uh, in foresight scenarios. So we coupled both foresight and needs from the stakeholders and scientific side. In addition to this intense analysis of information sources, we developed participatory approaches. And since the beginning of the project, the involvement of multiple stakeholders and society was supported by our work package. And a strong consultation process was organized. For each document, 3R 1.0 and 3R 2.0, stakeholders workshop were organized. And two consultative public Consultations were also launched online, and it was excellent opportunities to gather views on the identification and prioritization of research needs. It then clearly resulted in an improvement of the document, sharing this document and the, this RD needs with a lot of people gathering their minds together. While well, you can see on this slide an overview of the agenda for the 3R 2.0 process, I would like to uh, highlight the role played by the members of the Water GPI's governance, the governing board, and the advisory boards, who were included in every step and reinforced the process. Let's jump into the 3R. The Water GPI vision document was all starting point, as it outlined the main research and innovation themes of the Water GPI. And the 3R was developed of this vision document and the, this vision document structure uh, on five themes that have, had been identified in the vision document, improving ecosystem sustainability and human well-being, developing safe water systems for citizens, promoting competitiveness in the water industry, implementing a water-wise bio-based economy, closing the water cycle gap, improving sustainable water resources management. Following a three-branch structure, each of these five teams were then broken down into a number of sub-teams and a number of RD needs and objectives. It's important to underline that the 3R is not just a compilation of all the needs found in numerous sources. It is a source analysis of their scientific relevance, societal impacts, as each of the five teams is built on a sharp and detailed structure. 
that introduce the stakes, develop the expected impacts, and list all the identified needs that are prioritized. The next five slides will give you an insight of the technical content of the SRIA 2.0. The SRIA covers the full and broad range of RDE activities from academic research to innovation. For each team, we look into five types of expected impacts, social, economic, technological, environmental policy. You have seen then in the introductory of the SRIA 2.0, and in, on, on these slides, you have only a few examples of these expected Im impacts. Theme one, improving ecosystem sustainability. The goal of theme one is to maintain the essential functions, processes, and services of water bodies and ecosystems over the long term, and to achieve a balance between the exploitation of water for socioeconomic development and conserving ecosystem services. Ardan needs, for instance, uh, are to optimize ecosystem services, ecological functioning of ecosystems, establishing pressure impact relationships, restoring continuity, connectivity, prevent hydroclimatic events, predict drought, drought events, and water scarcity. The goal of Team 2 is to develop safe water systems, paying, paying attention to the impacts of emerging pollutants, of floods, water infrastructure, because water distribution and storage may be old and their performance far from optimum. And Erden needs includes, for instance, remediation of pollutants, predicting risk emerging pollutants, progressing towards floods, proof city, improving the performance of urban water systems. Promoting competitiveness in the water industry, because this sector is an important contributor to economic growth and job creation. Team 3 supports innovative tools and processes, information and communication technologies, energy efficiency, K technologies, as well as new regulatory frameworks and new education and governance regarding innovation. Our needs include, for instance, developing water reuse, recycling technologies, concepts, smart water technologies, water energy, nexus, and so on. The bioeconomy sector in Europe is expected to increase pressure on natural resources. And the overall goal of Team 4 is to encourage the sustainable use of water resources by the economy sector, including, of course, agriculture, and to safeguard water resources by reducing and limiting pollution. Other needs include, for instance, innovative and efficient irrigation systems, practices, reducing diffuse pollution, assessing impacts of pollution, developing new integrative simulation models for soil, water, and crop management. In many regions, it may be difficult to reconcile water supply and demand, both in terms of quantity and quality, by enabling the sustainable management of water resources. For this, the Team 5 will bring together ecology, social sciences, economics, geosciences, technologies, data, sensors, models. Other needs include, for instance, adaptive water management for global change, integrated economic and social analysis into decision-making processes, promoting new governance and knowledge management approaches for water management. That is for the five teams, but it's important to underline that 3R 2.0 is not only structured on these five thematic pillars, but simultaneously takes into consideration cross-cutting issues. As you can see in this slide, a number of elder needs or objectives are obviously linked to others within the 3 
and it shows how a number of key water-related issues addressed in the document are relevant to all five teams of the water GPI 3R and even to other challenges. I would like also to salute the efforts made in terms of communication to facilitate the accessibility of the greatest possible number of people to the 3R because the, the 3R doc technical document is a bit heavy. Hundreds of pages and you have uh, 200 references. Uh, that is also an, an important input of, the, of this three-year uh, work. But indeed, in addition to the release of the technical document, a public-friendly version has been published. This introduction to the 3R 2.0 is an easy-to-read and shorter, but still comprehensive version of the 3R to be to disseminated across a wide range of readers. And a glossary will also be available online with a definition of terms used in the 3R. It will be made interactive with this 3R and accessibly through the WaterGPI website. Well, finally, I would not like to finish this presentation without warmly thanking people who have made possible well, the success of the project and the publication of the 3R 2.0 in due time. And many special thanks to all partners for their continuous reactivity, feedback, and hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Um, thank you for that. And uh, you can now uh, consign it to um, uh, something you have done, and you can watch it sail away into the uh, bright blue yonder. It is, of course, an iterative process. The process I, I, I compared it to painting the uh, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco because when you get to the end of the Sriya, you start work immediately on, on version 4. And indeed, some of that initial work is already beginning. So um, it's, it's, it never ends. And, um, now I'm going to vacate this chair and hand over to Miguel, uh, 15 minutes behind time, which I, I apologize for, Miguel. Um, it's, it's because these people just wouldn't come back on time from their coffee. That's, that's, that's what I'm blaming. Um, and, and I leave you to start the round table. And I would invite uh, each of the speakers at the first round table to, to come and join us here. Okay, everyone seated and identified. So. Good, good morning, my name is Miguel Gilardán from the Spanish Ministry of Economy and Competitiveness. It is my pleasure to moderate this round table where we have a theme which is which priority for such a RIA? You now you are more familiar with the document, thanks to the presentation by Patoik. And let me introduce you to the participants in this round table. Starting from right, far, Dirk Roll, he is director of the Water Supply and Sanitation Technological Platform. He's worked in the last years in, in policy issues and in promoting interaction between stakeholders. And he's also involved in the Water JP in some extent since WSSTP is a member of the stakeholder advisory group. Next, Rep. Sepp Rekolainen. He's director of the Freshwater Center at the Finnish Environment uh, Institute. He's also a researcher in this institute with uh, an understanding profile in, in water research. And he's also familiar with the Water JPI. He's vice chair of the Scientific and Technological Board. 
next, uh, sorry, Karoli Kovacs. He's president of the European Water Association with a long-term professional experience in the field of water, water industry, and in very issues related to, to, to that. On my left side, close to me, Heather McCann. She is from the French National Institute for Agricultural Research and is also working as a European Affairs Officer at INRA. And he's also coordinating the FACHE JPI, which is very closely related to the water JPI and collaborating in some topics. Next is uh, Roberto Socchi. He's a member of the executive team of Euro, also with uh, large experience in water management resources, also in economy regulation. And he also has executive experience in research innovation at the Water Research Center. On far on my left side, Antonio Loporto. Antonio's researcher at the Italian Water Research Institute, and he has expertise in several topics related to water resources and river basin management. And he's also chair of the European Network for Public Freshwater Research Organization. He's also familiar with the Water JPI. He's chair of the stakeholders advisory group of the Water JPI. So our, our task in, in this round table is to debate about the ZRIA possible priorities. Uh, you have seen the ZRIA has a pivotal role in the water JPI, and that's why we had devoted so important efforts, resources, and time to elaborate the document that you saw in the presentation by Patrick. It's a, it's a document where we mainly have ideas. We have research needs. We also have some time frames for, the, for addressing these ideas. But uh, in addition to that, we need actions. We need actions to address these ideas. And we had also a companion document, a very important, which is the implementation plan, another important document in the Water JPI, where we have defined which actions we have to carry out to address the RDI needs. And when the thing comes to actions, is when we realize that we have limited resources, we cannot take care of all their research needs, or at least we cannot take, off, take, care, take care of them at the same time. And we need to prioritize. And that's when we engage with the topic of this round table. How can we prioritize when addressing these RDI needs? Uh, I would like to raise the, uh, a couple of, of comments, remarks, or questions so that we can start the debate. One of them is that, um, uh, in the elaboration of our SRIA, we have identified all the documents with similarities. And in some points, we have a common vision. In some points, we have uh, a vision more focused in our vision document. And in, in what extent this document should give similar or different priorities to the RDI needs that have been identified? Should each organization have different priorities? Should we all identify the most important and focus all of us in them? And in addition to this, um, these are living documents. So as we elaborate documents, other issues can pop up, maybe emerging issues, new problems, needs we have detected, new advances in knowledge and technology, uh, also new documents such as the uh, sustainable development goals we have been uh, listening about. So are there any, anything of these new issues missing in our documents? So this is my, my, my remarks to, to start with a debate. Maybe we can start in the same order as in the presentation. So Dirk, please. Okay, then. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can only see hot, part of the room, but I will so now and then look at the, to the other side. Um, so about the, the questions about how the different research agendas and organizations align. I think we've seen in um, Panos' presentation already that there are, I would say, in, um, outside the commission there are three main organizations which, I would say, set priorities, which are um, the EIP on water, uh, the JPI water, and WCP. Each of these organizations have their own founding documents. Just the EIP Water has uh, the Strategic Implementation Plan, 
the EIP, uh, no, the JPI and Water has its strategic research agenda, and also WSTP, we have um, our water vision and also our strategic innovation and re research agenda. Now, of course, we are looking at this from different perspectives. Yeah? The JPI Water is uh, primarily, I would say, led from the perspective of public research institutes, uh, national governments. While uh, WSTP, we are, I would say, we are a multi-stakeholder forum. Um, our members include multinational corporations, uh, research institutes, universities, uh, utilities, uh, uh, the supply chain, so the technology suppliers, and large uh, industrial and agriculture water users. So as a whole, we are industry-led. Yeah? Now, of course, what binds us all together is water, but naturally, if you look at how the organizations are built up, our perspectives um, will be different. Yeah? And I think that, that is also, will also be uh, reflected in our different documents. If I look, for example, at, we're also right now working on a new Water Vision 2030, on a new Strategic Innovation and Research Agenda 2030, and have a look at simply the, how the chapters in the documents are organized, you can clearly see that they're different. I mean, the document is not finished yet, but if I look at our vision, Strategic Research Agenda, the chapters will be more or less uh, the value of water, technologies, green and gray infrastructures, and governance. Yeah, so clearly, and I think um, there is added value in this combination of approaches. I think we are very complementary, and I think that's good. I think it's also very important that we are in close coordination. So that's very important. I mean, WSTP is an active uh, member of the Stakeholder Advisory Board of the JPI. Also, um, when we uh, initiate a, initiated our uh, revision of uh, our water vision and strategic innovation research agenda. Of course, we, we hired a consultant to help us with this and we immediately said, there is, we don't want you to be that original, there is a lot of information out there. So uh, the strategic, uh, the Sierra of the, the Sria of the JPI has also been an important building block for us to consider, to take into consideration when we were building our new strategic innovation and research agenda. Yeah, so I think with that, um, I um, quite well answered the first question. Uh, then let me see um, about the emerging topics or important challenges. I think one of the important challenges is not that much with regard to the specific content of our mutual SIRAs. It's about making water important. Yeah, because, I mean, time and time again, what we notice is that um, water is a very ephemeral top topic. I mean, today people will say, ah, water is important. If, if you spe speak to a politician, if you speak to a decision maker, of course they will recognize the importance of water. Yeah? But as soon as you move away, uh, the water drops again uh, on the agenda. Yeah? This is very different from a topic like energy. Yeah? Energy goes up remains important, yeah? Water, it's, it's constantly we have to throw up the ball of water, yeah? Water is also a very transversal topic, a very fragmented issue, which, which is also a tremendous sh challenge to, to make water important, yeah? Because, I mean, we've seen this change, uh, well, in, the, um, in Horizon 2020, to, take, to give you an example, yeah? Horizon 20, 2013, 2015, we've seen water as a standalone topic, yeah? Sometimes justly this was criticized, water transversal topic, so why not mainstream water? In principle, nothing wrong with the concept. The thing is, if you mainstream something and you do not define ownership of the topic, it dissolves. And that's what we've seen in the work program 2016-2017. Yeah? Water became a transversal topic, so it had to be integrated in. Well, to give you a few examples, Society Challenge 2, which is on energy, societal challenge three, yeah, which is on food, societal challenge five, which is our natural habitat, yeah, but also societal challenge seven, which deals with security, yeah, then in, in, the, in the different parts of industrial leadership and future and emerging te technologies. But there is nobody taking charge of, of these issues, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm being reminded that I should not speak too long, so uh, <laughs> I will close my contribution with this for the moment. And add on later. Yeah? Thanks.
Okay, thank you, Dirk. Seppo, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think uh, my colleague Dirk Kroll covered the uh, first question about the role of different initiatives very well, so I do not have very much to add to that. I agree that very much, so my comments goes more to the second question about the content and priorities of the strategic research agenda. Uh, I have had an opportunity to participate in some of the consultative meetings and participatory meetings when developing developing the first version, now the second version of, of, of the SRIA. And uh, it has been a nice, good experience. And this process, uh, I'm pretty sure it, it, it guarantees that uh, uh, the important issues are there. So it's hard to see that there's any anything missing. Maybe the negative point in this kind of a process is that uh, uh, we, we all researchers, research managers, we see important those issues what we have been doing and concentrating and where we have exper expertise including myself and then we try to keep on 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 uh, studies on these issues and and sometimes we then see as a result in this kind of agents some uh, some issues which have been already studied quite much and and uh, that makes it very very important actually to, to make the priorities so that maybe not paying attention to all issues which are written in SRIA, but try to pick up those which needs more attention, more research, and that we are, there are more open, open issues and gaps uh, and, and uh, put funding, funding on these. So SRIA certainly covers a, a very, very wide range of, of uh, of uh, water-related issues from technical, environmental, political, societal uh, point of view. And, and maybe, maybe not much is missing there. But when, when we develop SRIA further on, which we, I think we anyway have to do because the world is changing so rapidly around us and, and new issues are, are popping up. And when developing it further, I think it is uh, Maybe a good thing to have a look about the uh, other societal uh, processes and structures what are around us, and I not only mean about the links to food security and energy security, talking about the food energy water nexus now, but also beyond that. And I can give you an example from my own country. Some 10, 15 years ago, when the metal prices in world markets were very, very high, and together with some, some public subsidies, the mining industry started growing very, very much in my country and, and some other countries as well, not only in Finland. And uh, new mines were open, many of them. And this resulted in water quality problems, also water resources problems, because some of the mining industries, they use a lot of water. And we had to pay much more attention than, to that and very rapidly and couldn't clearly uh, give answers to those demands which popped out very rapidly. And now when the market prices of metals are very low, these same mines are closed. The first one bankrupted last week, the second one will be closed most probably this summer, and then we have another problem, what to do with mine tailings. So this is another example, just one example, so you can easily find many other examples which goes beyond what a, what a community which goes beyond the food energy community, in fact, every single uh, political decision, new legislation, new strategy has an impact on waters, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly, sometimes minor impact, sometimes a little bit more major impact. So I think, think this is something what we have pay more attention to. And this can be also clearly seen when looking at uh, uh, SDGs, which were presented by by FAO this morning, and uh, uh, this, this present SRIA version 2.0, it's pretty, this pretty well covers the uh, SDG 6, which is, <coughs> which is for the waters. Waters uh, maybe, maybe as a, maybe not, not, not the development aspect as well, but uh, the, the other, other aspects pretty well. But if you look at the other SDGs, for, for example, SDG 3, which is good health and well-being, SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities, SDG 12, responsible consumption and production, 
we can easily understand that water is there as well. And if looking at the sub-themes there, water is very often mentioned, sometimes maybe not mentioned, but it's there anyway. And even in, 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 in SDGs like uh, is it number 16, which says about peace, justice, and strong institution, there's a clear link to water, not only because we have uh, two global water conventions now in, 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 in force since 2015, so we, we probably need uh, more research on how effective is the international law to govern waters, especially in transboundary context, because, uh, well, most of the global population is situated in transboundary river basins, and that is a very important issue also for research. Uh, there's one more aspect what I would like to raise here is that uh, uh, is the collaboration uh, with countries outside Europe and outside EU. And uh, it's very good to see that uh, now, now for these pre recent calls and, and coming calls, there are more and more countries outside EU coming in. But maybe we could have a look if, if more emphasis should be put on, on, on this issue to get more countries and, and countries a little bit uh, bringing more emphasis also and, and important countries like, like India and China Europe cannot close its borders. We have to work together with other continents and other countries and other regions as well. So I will stop here and hand it over to Joe. Okay, thank you. Caroli, please. <coughs> yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to start uh, with, the, with the statement that uh, this agenda is a very impressive one. And uh, uh, if uh, previously it was a thank you for uh, the collaborators or cooperative uh, parties, uh, I would say congratulations to all of you. On the other hand, uh, my first uh, thought um, I would dedicate to the question of uh, limited resources. Why are these resources limited? Because the market is some way re, uh, limited, regulated, heavily regulated, the water market. And um, uh, there, there comes the question uh, whether only this, uh, let's say, agenda should be or would be uh, realized or like a top-down uh, story or uh, something uh, from uh, the bottom uh, and in the local and um, uh, on the places in the, uh, the industry uh, could be realized and done or where the resources might come from for research and development. And there I would like to draw your attention to some uh, figures uh, contradicting ones. Uh, the UNEP has made a, a study about uh, the next uh, coming 25 years uh, developing infrastructure, urban infrastructure, including everything, energy, uh, the uh, transportation, telecommunication, uh, gas, electricity, etc., etc., and water. What would you guess the water-related infrastructure is which part of all this story? I would not go uh, around, but I tell you, it's for its, its own more than 50% compared to all the others. All the others together are less than water. And on the other hand, if you uh, look at uh, the statistics, then you can see that uh, the household expenditures um, are, if you compare all the energy, transportation, telecommunication, and water-related expenditures from a family, then uh, by far uh, the water is the least uh, position in all these expenditures. So basically there is something wrong with, with the valuation of the story. And I can tell you that um, it's nice uh, to speak about uh, the, <coughs> the rainwater harvesting and reuse of water, uh, on, uh, on uh, Brussels level commission uh, strategic um, uh, coordination group meetings, uh, we are uh, talking about how to, how to improve uh, technologies and techniques. Uh, in most of the cases, I can tell you, there are techniques and technologies. Uh, the problem is that until the water cubic meter one uh, does not cost anything, uh, no one will go for reused water, or no one will invest in harvesting rainwater, even not in, uh, in regions where, where there is uh, scarcity or partial scarcity of water. 
So um, our position and my uh, uh, proposal would be if uh, coming from uh, the bottom or uh, even uh, priori prioritizing to pay attention to these uh, social uh, economical uh, issues, uh, research the real and re uh, redefinite uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, the capacity or willingness to pay, and um, uh, and uh, come away from this uh, something like two percent of the family income, because if we look around and if we consider the uh, climate change and all these uh, stories, then um, then uh, the times uh, which are coming uh, will prove that we will have to spend more. For, uh, for water, and then in this case, there will be local money for research and development, because uh, even with these programs, we need uh, the local uh, participants to, uh, to enter. And our problem is uh, that um, uh, in many of even EU countries, uh, not, even not the, the operation and maintenance costs, costs are not covered, not speaking about the reinvestment of, um, of uh, the existing assets. So if uh, speaking about research and development, please let's research and let's uh, have a look at the affordability issues, uh, the cost recovery. How do we not have, since 16 years, since the Water Framework Directive is existent, how do we not have an indicator for cost recovery? So that would be a nice topic to, de to develop. Thank you. Thank you, Caroli. Heather, please. OK, well, <clears throat> I'd like to start by congratulating uh, the Water JPI on this very, very nice SRI, uh, SRIA, um, which um, having done a similar work for a FATCHA JPI, I know is a lot of work. And um, so I'd just like to mention, we also have five core research themes, um, which are, I'll mention briefly, because you'll see that we, the, the interactions between water and um, FATCHA JPI are very, are very strong. We have f sustainable food security under climate change. Uh, we have um, sustainable intensification of agricultural systems, which of course uh, Im implies water. We have synergies and trade-offs between uh, food supply, biodiversity, and ecosystem <coughs> services, and then adaptation and mitigation to climate change. So um, I think that uh, Maurice uh, mentioned this, this a few research areas that would be um, uh, important uh, to go forward. Um, and um, among those were, for example, uh, less water uh, consuming plants. So obviously you see that there's a very, very strong link between uh, what we, we can do. And um, I think that to, to go forward, um, in fact, um, the question was, one of the questions was about what the overlaps are with, over, with other initiatives. Well, I think it's very important in, in creating this kind of agenda to take into account the whole perimeter of, of your research area. So, I mean, we have, but we do have some overlaps. And where I think it's really important is to uh, use those overlaps and to use uh, what uh, an expression that we use a lot in joint programming, which is alignment, uh, which is to look and which is what we've done, and see where those overlaps are and create alignment and synergy. And as you probably are aware, in Waterworks 2015, we worked very closely, uh, FATCHA JPI, with the Water JPI to have a joint call. Um, as a result, it, we had, I would say, um, the, the, uh, the call is now closed. It was a very, very successful Aranet call. As far as, I mean, in my experience, it's the most successful one I know of. Um, and um, so this was really a very, very uh, fruitful way of going together forward uh, in synergy. And I think when we look at the different, uh, the strategic research agendas between FATCHA and water, well, clearly there's a way forward. And given the broad scope of the water JPI, it's not just with FATCHA JPI, but as was mentioned earlier, with the climate JPI and with the, with the, a number of other different uh, initiatives. I think, um, I mean, the, with the JPIs, that because they have a, the similar goals and um, uh, bringing together alignment of public research, there's, there's certainly some um, um, 
it makes a lot of sense to, to perform alignment between JPIs. And um, as I said, this has been a way very successful. And what I'd also like to highlight is um, in Waterworks 2015, a number of international partners came on board. And that's very, very uh, good for, uh, for the Water JPI and also for FATCHA JPI because it's a way of bringing in, um, because these are global questions and we need to bring in the international partners. And I think you're going to discuss uh, international cooperation a little bit more this afternoon. But um, so I'd like to say that um, for me, uh, for in terms of other initiatives, it's really important to work together and identify where we can we can be uh, working in synergy. Um, I think that um, in terms of emerging challenges, I think that the the, the SRA is very complete. Um, I'd like to just reiterate what Dirk said, which is that I think that um, making water important and really sens sensitizing people and uh, education about uh, the importance and, and, and the value of water, because uh, if we don't do something now, well, we know that we, we, have, <laughs> we have some big problems. So I'll stop there. Thank you, Heather. Your turn, Roberto, please. Yes, my turn. Thank you very much, Miguel, first of all. Uh, I'm pleased that this event has been hosted in my town, uh, so I'm really pleased uh, that you see you know, how, how good it is and how magnificent it is. Uh, also the water, I have to say, not just because uh, we are providing this. Anyway, uh, just a little bit of history. You already made my profile, but I'm now here representing a row that it is the uh, manager the, the Federation of the uh, Water Manager Association in all the European countries. Uh, but my background, uh, 25 years ago, I was the uh, responsible for uh, the Italian subsidiary of WRC, so research activity. In 2000, I made a joint venture with ACEA, and what I'm usually to say is that now I enter into a belly of a manager, so I was able to see this aspect of research, of innovation mostly, from both sides, also because now I'm still in the board of WRC UK, <coughs> and I'm a director or senior manager of ACEA, so I have this uh, prospection. And uh, I'm really pleased about this program, but I would like just say two things uh, from the side of the water manager. First of all, Dirk, you are absolutely right. Uh, the sensibility about the water is important. If you go to our site, uh, to the Euro site, you see that our motto is water matters. And this is one of the most important things uh, that we have to, to do, to let the people to understand how important is the service uh, of having water in the houses and mostly to just push a button and everything disappear and do not pollute the water. And that is important because it's not easy to let people to understand this. It's not easy to let people to understand how difficult it is to do our job. But just about that, just about research, uh, one important thing to say is that we are absolutely an important player in the research and innovation activity as a water manager. And believe me, just to move uh, water manager into innovation is not easy because uh, water is one of the most conservative sector just because we are monopolist because we do not have the push to innovation that the free market uh, gives uh, to every company so we have uh, an important things to uh, or, or better we must have competitive uh, surrogation that means that we have the regulation <clears throat> that have to be for us the way to be more competitive, uh, to have much more uh, innovation as try to change things. Because uh, we have to have uh, not a direct uh, market competition, but we have a competition of the business of some targets uh, that regulation and regulator give us. So, that, I believe, is one of the things that I also suggest. I have seen uh, the, the, you know, the team of uh, uh, the program of SRIA that are really interesting. But, and I've seen that it's important, uh, the one in rising the competitiveness of the water sector. And it's important to try to include also the regulation. Regulator made uh, a, an European association 
that is called WAREG, that is uh, water regulation. So I advise uh, to have this kind of relationship because it's important uh, that all the innovation activity would be also recorded uh, and things. And uh, last, uh, I believe that, again, Dirk, uh, but just because it was first, uh, because, you know, <laughs> I, I know him since a long time, and he's my friend, and just to say, in Euro, we decided uh, that directly the manager, so the association, referred to the innovation and to research to WSSTP. Because as I said, we are important as recipient. Because uh, in our sector, in the water management, is the supply chain that do the real research, including in the supply chain also the <laughs> research institute and the other. But it's absolutely important to have a manager that are sensible to innovation because we buy solution, usually. We are not involved uh, directly in uh, research, uh, but it's absolutely important uh, because uh, we are the one that apply the research, that we feed the ideas and the innovation to be tested and to be applied and developed. We know that water is a local business, but with global implication, because uh, you produce a new valve uh, to, for my needs, and you can sell uh, the innovation that you have done all over the world. So it's absolutely important uh, our role in this and to have these, uh, you know, confined in our sector. That means uh, testing and having, let's say, facilitation to apply the solution that the supply chain uh, will uh, <coughs> do. I have also a suggestion for a team, but I don't want, I don't know if you want me to say now or later, because uh, I believe that one of the major points is asset. One of the major points that we have is long-term investment in asset. That, I mean, exactly our things, but I just want you to think about the situation. We all manage assets that have been built one over the other, in a sense that after the Second World War, there was the booming of the population, so a lot of uh, new asset for drinking water and the other, rising the level of services. Then the 70s and 80s, uh, waste water, the sensibility for the environment, uh, and we made a lot of asset, sewage system, overcoat, whatever. Now we are rising the standard and new asset. But the problem is that those assets need to be properly maintained. We have to take care of the serviceability of those assets. Because otherwise, we leave a big problem to our children. For the simple reason that most of those assets have been built on public money, rises the debt of the member states, like Italy. So leaving a big problem to our children. If we do not properly uh, take care of the serviceability of the asset, we have a big problem. Just to number and just quit. Uh, Italy invests very low. And we are trying now with the new regulation system to uh, rise this, service, this uh, investment level. And we are now at about uh, 35, 40 euro per person. Other European very, let's say, with a very good service, uh, invest 100 to 120, 129 Denmark. Uh, uh, euro per person. The value of the asset, uh, if I would like to make from scratch, new is about 3,000, 6,000 euro per person. So we are investing in global 100 or 150 of the value of the asset that we have to build <coughs> from scratch. So that is something that I believe is an important issue and we should invest also in research and activity in developing asset integrity management techniques something that, you know, give uh, this uh, focus on water and asset. Water matter, but also asset matter, because a service. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm glad to know, know about these comments on asset, because one of the topics that was included in the area was uh, researching uh, asset management. Okay. So it's good to, to know that uh, the view of the managers is well reflected in, in this area. So, uh, Antonio, your turn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, in your introduction, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, uh, the Uraqua. Uh, um, Uraqua is the network of the public reference research institutes uh, on fresh water into the EU member states. Uh, we are now 25 uh, member states uh, represented into Uraqua. Uh, we look at the the water panorama from a peculiar point of view, from the point of view of, uh, uh, from the perspective of public interest. And uh, to, um, in this uh, dark age of uh, economic crisis, uh, the attention tends uh, usually to be conveyed to market-oriented and uh, uh, to market-oriented issues to try to improve uh, job creation and economic growth. Uh, this is fine, we support it, uh, of course. But this uh, sometimes can lead, and uh, we think that actually it does, uh, to oversee some issues that are not directly or obviously linked to uh, market creation and economic growth. Um, and uh, um, for example, uh, water uh, conservation and river basin uh, uh, management, where industrial interest is somehow uh, lower than expected. Uh, so uh, Euraqua uh, really welcomes the ZRIA from the Water JPI, um, the approach into this ZRIA, uh, that in our view uh, must complement the uh, approach that is uh, uh, currently <coughs> pre present in uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, many of our uh, um, issues, uh, the, the issues that uh, Euraqua uh, consider to be uh, hotspots, relevant issues, are present into the ZRIA, uh, and uh, I know that are present into the ZRIA of the FACI JPI because we somehow cooperated with both of them. So we are happy uh, with those uh, um, uh, ZRIA. Uh, we just want to uh, highlight a couple of issues. Um, first of all, uh, we want to say that uh, Euraqua developed is, uh, are, is developing uh, our own uh, research agenda, our own perspective uh, on the research issues on water, and uh, we will uh, uh, distribute and we, we, we will publicly, uh, you know, uh, in, um, demonstrate uh, the content. Uh, um, we have uh, all highlighted four uh, high, big, big level uh, issues. One is on extreme hydrological events, of course, floods and droughts. Uh, and this is somehow linked to an issue that has been, been mentioned by uh, the previous speaker. This is the, uh, that is uh, regarding the aging, aging uh, water infrastructure, which is a big problem that uh, can uh, have uh, reflections, negative reflections on uh, drought and even on floods. Um, second issue is um, about the combined treats from chemical pollution. Uh, that, that is the issue of uh, the uh, emerging pollutants. Uh, nothing to say about that. Uh, we are happy with the uh, content of the ZRIA. Uh, we want to raise an issue regarding the third uh, subject that we uh, uh, highlighted, ecosystem enhancing uh, services application uh, in uh, nature base, application of nature-based solutions. Um, uh, it does not be said, if I am not wrong today, that uh, uh, Europe is going to fail probably in the implementation of some uh, water-related uh, directives. For example, the water framework directive. Uh, it is a matter of fact that uh, uh, very few rivers have uh, reached the good ecological status, which is the main subject of the, uh, of the water framework directive. There are uh, many reasons for that. Uh, first of all, the large, uh, large, uh, to say, access to the issue of uh, of, to, of the uh, large access to the, uh, to say, declaration of uh, uh, exceptions uh, for heavily modified rivers uh, that currently are very unknown uh, how to be handled. Uh, there is no, uh, there is the provision to be uh, named as uh, heavily modified rivers, but nobody knows what to do after that. Uh, and there, was, there is also some other uh, issue that I'm, I'm been uh, uh, saying, saying uh, many times. Uh, we know we have tools and knowledge to uh, uh, to uh, to reach uh, to make the rivers reach the good hydrological um, uh, status, the good uh, chemical status. But we have no uh, clue how to go from this good eco uh, 
hydrological and chemical status to a good ecological status. Still, there is research to be done in this, in this issue. Many, a, a, lot, a lot of effort has been done in this, uh, in this way, but still some research uh, must, must be done. And this must be present, in our view, into the uh, Water Framework Directive revision that is uh, meant to happen within 2019. Um, also, I we would, would like to point out that uh, some specific attention must be uh, devoted to uh, a special kind of rivers that are high energy rivers, sm uh, small rivers, but with high energy. I'm speaking about rivers in, uh, in Italy, Greece, uh, uh, Balkans, uh, uh, in some part of Spain and France maybe, uh, where, where uh, the, uh, there is no, almost no floodplain and where the energy is very high, so it is very, uh, very difficult to handle these, uh, uh, those rivers in which uh, they, uh, they pass from very high flow to zero flow in a few days, and uh, they, uh, where the length of the flow, zero flow days is very uh, elongated during the year, the year, and climate change can, can um, worst it. Um, also, the last point, the last of the four points that we raised is uh, uh, basin-wide management um, issue. Uh, we know uh, how to, uh, uh, how, we have, there is some knowledge about how um, management practices provided uh, that must be planned into the program of measures. Uh, we know how they are, um, uh, their functioning, and uh, we know also uh, if they uh, about uh, their efficiency. But we do not know uh, what happens at the basin scale from the uh, to say the uh, complex patchwork uh, patchwork of uh, management practices placed now and then uh, there into the basin. We have to uh, develop a, a knowledge and tools to uh, as, uh, be able to design better program of, of measures. And to conclude, um, I want to, uh, to stress another, let's say, organi uh, to say organizational to, uh, issue. Uh, water GPI, not only water GPI, all the GPIs mostly relate on Aranet. And this is a very uh, good tool because uh, uh, since they are uh, based on uh, variable geometry, it allows the countries to be involved uh, according to their uh, willingness, to their uh, interest in the specific topic of that area. But to be um, efficient, these this, uh, this, uh, tools, the area, uh, it, it is needed that member states, funding countries, uh, devolve a, as to say, a sufficient, a minimum uh, level of funding. Sometimes the contribution from member states is so low, so ridiculous sometimes, that it is not enough to support efficient and serious research projects with very few, sometimes uh, tens of thousands of euros, you cannot do a research project, uh, an efficient research project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Antonio. So we have in the table uh, different uh, opinions, different views from different sectors, the research opinion, the managers, the, the companies, the, the market. So uh, any replies? I, I would uh, add uh, something. Um, uh, it was mentioned that uh, many things in this uh, question area are public. And uh, it was also a word about public procurement. Uh, pu public procurement for uh, research and development is something special. But what I mean uh, is, uh, as we have uh, in the new EU reg legislation, uh, the life cycle uh, costing um, and uh, the evaluation of public procurements based on life cycle costing, I would uh, suggest that uh, when uh, doing research and development, then uh, all researchers should focus on if it's uh, about some sort of solutions, that these solutions might have uh, possibly the lowest life cycle costs. So that's something <laughs> I wanted to add. Please. Dirk, please. Yeah, well, perhaps building a bit on my, my earlier statement, um, I think, for example, looking at the short term, where we, I think we all want to make sure um, that water is well represented in the future wor work program of Horizon 2020. It is really important that we build a strong case for water. Yeah? And uh, I really look forward um, to working together <coughs> with the JPI Water to ensure that water will be well represented. But I am also looking to each 
and each one of you, um, which are in connection with your na national member states, yeah, to make sure that from your perspective, uh, water is pushed strongly in a holistic way. Yeah? Not only directly, but for example, uh, there is now uh, the circular economy, which is discussed by the Council. Yeah? It is very important that we got, get water in there because making water visible there has a reflection on how water is perceived in general and then will trickle down again to Horizon 20, 2020. I have very good news. Today the Council working groups are discussing the last draft and water is in there right now. So I think that, that is very good news. But in general, I think too much we are focusing, as a water sector, we are focusing too much on our direct interest, while we should also take the larger picture um, in perspective, because only by doing that, we can make sure that water um, gets a stronger um, position in general, which will then trickle down to serve our direct interests. Yeah? Thanks, Dor, that's good news. And does the result of uh, lobbying groups trying to push water issues. And Amongst I, others. <laughs> like us. And I, I would like to comment something on that, it, it, to raise a, a, an additional question. And most of the documents we have, are most of the programs are programs that are reached through consultation. And in this consultation, some lobbies are involved. Not only lobbies from the industry, the market, but also from research, research that lobby around the, the, the topic. So do you think that the, the, the priorities can be set I in a fair way? Can we get rid of uh, excessive lobbying exercises when setting priorities? Uh, so, sorry, I just take the floor for the simple reason that, as you have understood, Euro is a lobbying uh, organization. <laughs> uh, especially in Italy, lobby is not a good word. Uh, you know, you, when you think about lobby. Because we have no regulation. We have no regulation. You're right. You're right. Right, the real term and the pure term, the right term of a lobbyist is, uh, or a lobby, is a person that provides proper information. So lobbyist and the lobby should be some sort of, uh, I don't say education, but at least information activity that allow policy makers to wider the view that they have uh, with the, let's say, understanding and things uh, of uh, the people that are involved in directly in the business. There is more definition. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Every one of us have uh, the, the mind of uh, the lobbyist of thank you for smoking movie. I don't know if you have seen it. If you don't have seen, uh, please uh, have a look to the do thank you for smoking because uh, you know, it's absolutely uh, you know, a character of the lobbyist that is important. But I believe that we have to just evaluate uh, or let's say uh, try to you to have uh, this smart definition of a lobbyist uh, in a sense that uh, lobby have to be some something done uh, you know in a clear way something that has to be done uh, in a proper transparent way uh, that should have uh, a benefit because as I told you uh, the real meaning of a lobbyist in my view but not in my view in everyone you that do this job is just to provide pr proper information and a view of the problem from the perspective of people that have some experience. Any replies to this question? So can we open the debate to the audience? There's a microphone there. Yeah, there is one at the back, please, Leonardo. Thank you very much. Um, Leonardo Piccini, TFB B Water Project, uh, which is reorganizing also stakeholder event in a funding agency with the GPI. Uh, I like uh, the concept of uh, the impact of uh, urban, uh, was mentioned from AWA, in particular the concept of uh, the social implication. The European Commission also, also mentioned today where we are now in terms of crisis, in terms of refugees issues, which is also important. I would like to also draw attention that uh, Network H2O, which is the network of cities and regions, we have uh, two community groups. One is uh, related to global cities and society. So we are very focusing to see the engagement of uh, the city of the street. Uh, secondly, we have another group in international cooperation uh, related to water refugees. 
And I would like to put attention about this, because if uh, we are talking about uh, what Durkee said, G GPI is also focusing to public funding. We need to also focus into the public awareness. This is a very, very important point. Any more opinions in the room? Okay, we are still in a in schedule for maybe some, oh, there's another here. Mats, please. Uh, Mats Ernsson from Sweden, uh, the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management. Um, 2011, we got a, a um, request from Denmark. They wanted to buy uh, water from Sweden. Uh, the Swedish government didn't know what, how to answer that, that kind of request. And um, I mean, we are, are seeing ourselves as being water-rich countries uh, still, uh, even though we have some uh, drought situations also in Sweden and so on. But I think also that this uh, uh, thing with, with an internal water market for Europe, that is a challenge that we should actually take on board from a water API perspective then also. I would like to hear your opinion about that kind of issue as well then also. Because it's not the last thing. Um, Norway, for example, they have a saying, when, when the oil is finished, we will sell water, for example. So what, what will happen here with the, the internal um, European uh, water market then also? That's my question. Uh, I, I, if I can say something, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, if I, I don't, I, I have no answer for you. But I, I want to say that you are not alone. Uh, Italy is going most likely to buy water. Buy the microphone. Uh, okay, uh, you are not alone. Italy is going to buy water from Albany uh, probably in the next future. So uh, it is a, a very big problem. Uh, I, under, I understand your point, uh, your question, but I don't. Dirk? I think one of the main problems is, is as you indicate, I mean, there's simply, there is no market for water in Europe. Yeah? And that is also because, I mean, water is a very complicated topic. If you simply use it, see it to use, yeah, you have water being used for domestic purposes, for industrial purposes, for agricultural purposes, for environmental purposes. Now, as soon as you start talking business and water, in a domestic context, you end up in a very sensitive debate. Yeah, and that's a debate you should avoid because it is a debate with le which will lead you nowhere. Yeah, so you somehow I think we have to find a way around that issue because you end up in a very politicized ambition. You end up in a, in a, in a debate on how water is managed, public, private. But public is not public and private is not private because if you look at the at management, there are very different public ways of management, very different ways of private management. So it's. Yeah, it's a very complicated issue. So, more replies, one from Roberto, please. Uh, not only this, uh, because uh, as you said, this is an issue. There are other strange, uh, what you say about Italy and uh, Albania, or uh, just to tell you that in uh, Austria, there is a public company that do uh, investment, uh, have made a big you know, main trunk, uh, and offer the water to the municipalities, saying that if you want my water, you have to buy this because I have done my investment. Uh, I would say one thing. I would believe, and I believe that we have to follow the same concept that we have in the Italian legislation, in my view. You know that we had a big debate about a referendum in 2011 uh, that was uh, just try to have a public uh, uh, management of the water, and uh, there was, a, say, a misunderstanding in my view, and the fact is that uh, now we have just to have uh, a big definition between uh, ownership and uh, service. And our legislation said that the water is public, and so there is no any local authority that owns the water, because the water is public in all the Italian territory, but the service is different. So the service is something that, uh, you know, someone has to arrange, manage, and pay. So if we, I don't know if we will be easy in Europe uh, to have something like that, but 
if we have the possibility to have this concept enlarged at European basin level, saying that, you know, whether it was the European citizen, but that, as Duke was saying, means to have also some sort of political impact, not easy to manage. But in my view, the debate, as I told you, is not public, uh, pub, private, public, private, or whatever, because that management has to be efficient. That's it. And someone has to check that it's efficient, that that be either the regulator or where in a northern country in which they have the full cost recovery, they have benchmarking or other things that show that they are efficient. But that, I believe, that could be an answer. It's quite far away, anyway. <laughs> So we have time for two more quick replies. First, Caroline, then Seppo. Yeah, one, um, uh, one information. Uh, there are European countries uh, selling or, or providing water, even uh, drinking water, uh, to each other and also exchanging wastewater. So some uh, municipalities on the borders are trans uh, giving, let's say, or transporting water and wastewater. So it's absolutely something what, what works and um, there is no... Uh, objection about it, uh, but I would like to add uh, some uh, one topic based on your example. What sort of water would it be? Uh, just drinking water for drinking purposes, and there is some sort of market for bottled water, which I would uh, like to stress uh, to involve also into the water demand researches, because uh, there is a, 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 a development which is showing that people are losing the faith into tap water as drinking water are going over to bottled water. And in even Eastern European countries, we are starting to spend more for bottled water, so all over the society, than what we spend for, because of political and regulatory reasons, whatever reasons, for the total uh, water service provided by uh, utilities, which is crazy because we are using there 100 times more water than what we drink. So it's not a sort of competition, it's uh, just a, a message how to communicate values and, uh, and um, impacts if uh, we do not consider these issues. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, well, Carole already raised up the point where I wanted to say that we had already we have already a good market for for bottled water in in, in Europe and all all around the world, and then that's there and there's a there's a proper price for water for drinking water in that way, but bringing a huge amount of water from the water it's north to the south for agricultural purposes is a, is a much more bigger thing and there's no clear market for that. Building a market, uh, then we could make, could have a price for water, a proper price for water, finally. But as as Turk said, it's uh, at least as much political question as uh, the oil market. So there are certainly a lot of restrictions and, and bottlenecks, and and I think that we should do all what we can do to increase the water use efficiency before trying to develop the water markets for, for example, for irrigation. Well, we are reaching the, the final part of the session. Let me um, revise some of the ideas that came up. We have an added value in, in having complementary documents addressing the needs in terms of research, development, innovation. We should give priority to water as a whole. It's now very fragmented, but the first effort should be in water as a whole to make it important for society, for policymakers. We can also give some priority uh, to holistic approach in those cases where boundary areas can benefit f from the research. An example was in fat produ food production and water efficiency. The limited resources are a consequence of, uh, let's say, low investment from public administrations. And also because there is a limited market, also a regulated market, and that, that, that's an issue for uh, private investment. Um, we need to make managers sensitive to innovation, so raising important research issues for them, such as asset management, maybe to also uh, societal challenges, uh, societal issues such as the, the, the trend in, in bottled water markets. And uh, lobby is uh, a desirable activity to 
bring information to policymakers, makers, but uh, provided that it is made in a clearer and transparent way. Okay. Any other uh, point that you would like to remark? Very sharp as a bullet point. Okay. If not, I would to I would like to to thank all the participants in the round table for your nice. Okay. Um, and after the, we so, sorry, Patrick. Uh, no, no, we have time for lunch, and we also will have a, a during lunch we'll will have a, a poster session where it will be a, a good place to, to to meet and debate about around the poster and the projects that they are running now. So thank you, chair. <laughs> <laughs>